Come on, motherfucker! Come on, motherfuckers, come on! Come on, motherfuckers, come on! There were two Scooby games that used the original theme and, you know, recreated the original opening. The other being Night of a Hundred Frights. And, um, I gotta say, that opening was better mostly because, well, it didn't spoil all that you would see in this game. Like, in this intro, you see all the locales, all the monsters, and, yeah, pretty much spoils you. It'll sure be good to see my cousin Jet again. I can't wait to meet him. Like, what does Jet do, Fred? He makes monsters. Monsters? Ooh, this is a new one. The gang goes to meet one of their relatives to see what they do cliche. This happens a lot more than you think. Pretty much everyone goes to see someone's uncle, someone's cousin, to go do a thing and find a monster. Welcome to Scooby-Doo and a Mask, where you can play as a talking Great Dane, descended from ancient aliens from the 10th dimension called the Anunnaki, and has the same moveset as Crash Bandicoot. Wouldn't surprise me if he was a naughty dog. Dooby dooby doo. What? <laughs> what? So that key card was just floating in midair about six feet off the ground? Pull the other one. It plays Jingle Bells. Great. You found a clue. It's some sort of key card. Hmm. Apparently a key card is needed to open this one electric gate to get to this one button to open this singular door. Bingo. Now try to see if you can reach that switch, Scooby. Try to see if you can... It, it's right there. They... Anyone can get it now. Why all of a sudden is it only me who can get it? You could go forward and press it. Hey, Scooby. Velma and Daphne went to check out the workshop that way. Huh? You'll need to slide down that cable to follow them. Remind me again why I have to slide down that cable? And why I can't just go the same way they did? Or, wait, are you saying they slid down the cable and that's how I follow them? Are... Are you all doing what I'm doing? You know, running, jumping, sliding, all this parkour shit. Boy, ice cream. Who the hell left an ice cream cone just sitting around? The only people who I know do that are crazy killer clowns who drive ice cream trucks with missiles, bombs that turn into robots. And that's to fool people to come close and kill them. Or is this like one of those drumsticks where it's like an ice cream cone that comes in a wrapper? I hope that's the case. Did you see that costume over there? It looks like the beast from Bottomless Lake. Impressive. It's weird how this is the only time you guys comment on meeting a character we met in the past. We run into the crazed ghost clown. We run into Zen Tuo. We run into his zombie minions. Heck, we even run into uh, the caveman and the 10,000 volt ghost. And the pterodactyl ghost. But you don't say anything about that. You're treating it like it's the first time. And the caveman didn't even appear in a museum. He appeared in an aquarium. It moved. Come on, Scooby. It didn't move. It's just a costume. This whole game apparently happens because Velma's dismissive. Because, uh, spoiler warning, Jed is in this costume. And if we let him out now, then the whole game is shot. So we find out later that Mubber is a soy-based product. So, chocolate, that... That, that's kind of okay. That, that gets a pass. But every time we go up to these other mubber machines that require a certain amount and dispense something that is not made from soy, um, it gets two sins, okay? But for now, it's one sin, because why are these here? Why are these just strewn about all over the place in random locations? Ugh, it looks like a thousand clowns got a little too excited going down this slide. I call it mubber. A remarkable soy-based formula that can take any shape. And it only breaks down under UV light. This has to be some of the greatest substance I've ever heard of. It's biodegradable, and it can take any shape and mimic practically any substance. And it's being used to make movie monsters. Alright. And on that UV note, how come the animatronics just started convulsing and collapsing like... 
if all the UV light does is break down the mubber, then surely the animatronics would still be on the rampage. It's not like the UV light affects them, or the mubber keeps them functional. And now I think about it, you couldn't use these animatronics in the early morning anyway, because the sun generates UV light, and in the early morning it's at its strongest. How can you be sure it's Jed? He's missing. And so is my mubber, UV lamps, some animatronics. That's all the proof I need. Okay, here's my counter-argument. Some other company was jealous of you, started stealing your stuff, Jed found out, and then they kidnapped him. I mean, just because your mubber was stolen and all that was gone and Jed disappeared doesn't necessarily mean he did it. Hello, sir. I'm Fred Jones, and this is Daphne Blake from Mystery Inc. Hello. Pleased to meet you. My name is Ho Fang, and I own this antique shop. Of course, there aren't too many customers since the dragon showed up. Hey, weren't you the guy who was originally the original Zen Tuo? Owned an antiquity shop, stole and uh, trafficked uh, ancient artifacts to sell on the black market? And you have nothing to do with Zen Tuo's reappearance? Huh. How come this is the only villain out of costume we see in the game? We don't get Mr. Wickles, we don't get, like... I don't know, the ghost clowns guy out of costume? Like, why is Ho Fong the only one? It's so jarring. Interesting. The fortune inside the cookie looks like some kind of binary code. Which was left out in the open, for some reason. And why did you put a binary code that is apparently so important to control the animatronics in a giant cookie and leave it out on the street? Not so sure it's a good idea to pick up a back alley eggplant. Out of all the foods that could be in Chinatown, why cotton candy? It's even worse now that it's back alley cotton candy. Look, Scooby, just because Simon Belmont does it doesn't mean you should pick up floor ham either. It's probably fucking dirty. Oh, I'm sure the people who work here won't mind if we just steal their broom and never give it back. How dare you disturb the peace of the great Zendor? Peace, what the hell are you even doing here? What in what way do these fortune cookies factor into your plan in any way? Who are you? What do you want? Why are you doing this? Why the cookies? Oh, why, oh, why the cookies? What is a scale of the Mubber Dragon doing anywhere near this establishment, which has nothing to do with Zen Tuo? I don't know why it's here, or why he was here trying to scare us away from here. Shaggy fell in the sewers? Then he is lost. The sewers are Zen Tuo's domain. Look, I'm not scared of the guy now, because you flat out just said that the ghost of Zen Tuo's domain is the domain of shit. That's what you find in a sewer. Shit. And since Zen Tuo's down there, he must be shit too. Why are these around? These coins that give you special suits like a Mega Morphin Power Rangers power-up? I don't know. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. It makes sense Shrimp be in Chinatown, but... Who left Shrimp on the tip of this dragon statue? We interrupt this episode of Scooby-Doo on Mass to bring you a Kung Fu movie. Golden Arms, Wu-Tang vs. Shaolin, Shaolin vs. Yao Zai, or more accurately, Street Fighter. Why am I down here picking up Scooby Snacks? Why am I picking up any food-related things in a sewer? And I don't care how clean it looks. This is a sewer. It might not be a glob, slime-infested mess like in Ghostbusters or in the NES days, but it is still a place of piss and shit and terrible Clinton Tarantino movies. What 379 IQ dumbass decided to put all this beautiful Chinese architecture in a sewer? What 900 IQ genius decided to make the sewer this damn big? It's supposed to be like a pipeline, delivering undesirables to an undesirable location where they can then break down. Why is this sewer so goddamn big? This is the kind of place where you find unicorns playing Metallica's Sandman on instruments that were from far back in America's past. And they don't know that because their education was founded by a frog who didn't know the word I to tomato bisque. I just realized, aside from viewing the monsters in the monster gallery, what's the point of the trap pieces? Because we don't build the trap and then use it to fight the boss. We just get it to get 
tidbits on upcoming enemies, and sometimes not even that. So, what's the point of these trap pieces? And what idiot left a gas canister in a sewer? You wouldn't even need such a thing in a sewer unless it was maybe to power a floodlight. Yeah, never mind, that's fine. Just add sin for useless trap piece. Who threw away an entire fish? And why am I even considering eating it? I found it in a sewer! Really, you're gonna take that and eat that. A wedge of cheese that's been marinating and soaking in shit water. I mean, dogs have eaten worse. Apparently, some cosmic force is preventing Scooby from just ripping that flimsy fence down and pressing the button. And if that was actually a gate and Zentuo put it up, why does he pull it down after we defeat 13 animatronics? <laughs> Apparently, walking into a mouse hole in the wall will make you fall into the fucking void. Ah, shit. I'm in the void again. Okay, this cabbage has definitely been in some piss water. You're not gonna eat that. Oh, fuck. You're gonna eat that, aren't you? Well, I pity Shaggy's bowels, because he's gonna be on the crapper trying to get all that crap out of his system. Are you sure that's a pickle you're picking up? Because I'm pretty sure you'll find something else long and lumpy in the sewer. It's like that one scene in uh, Flushed Away when Rodney finds the chocolate bar. Wait, I thought this was like Chinatown, you know, a large chunk of a city that's essentially Chinatown. You know, it's a town for Chinese people and Chinese culture. And they have a temple. I have never heard of a Chinatown ever having a temple of any kind. This is a counterweight used in emergency stairs. Maybe those stairs lead to Zentuo's hideout. So it's clear all but three of these things are involved in Zentuo's plan to do whatever. So why were they in the sewers and the cookie factory and presumably in the temple? Like, why, why are they there? Okay, now you're pissing me off. Who the hell leaves a cooked lobster on top of a building? And before any of you say, yes, I am aware that lobsters come in three colors, depending on the balance of their proteins or whatever. Blue, blackish blue, or orange, or red if you're like that. But cooked lobster. That was a cooked lobster. It was bright red, not orange. You're wrong. End of story. I let it go in the sewers because that could have been explained, but apparently this temple likes having electrified water. You've got to get me out of here, Scooby! Jesus Christ, Ashley. I mean, Daphne. I'm right here! I'm coming up! Just keep your shirt on! Apparently this clue, which is basically a receipt for UV lights, uh, it just stayed suspended in midair. Until I lifted up this pillar, made it sprout out these little planks. Alright. This is a packing slip for UV lamps. This could explain the strange light coming from the dragon's eyes. What are you talking about, Velma? We haven't even seen the dragon yet. Maybe Zentuo's hideout is there. Or maybe a tourist who came and got himself killed in the electrified water dropped it. Not everything has to tie into the big bad. I wonder why the anima... Of course, the fortune inside the giant cookies. It's the computer code used to reprogram the robots. Which for some reason had to be in this giant cookie out on the street for some reason. And not, you know, programmed into a computer. Hmm. Dragon came from. Uh, same place as all the other animatronics that have been trying to kill me? Monstrous Frightened Magic? It's made of mubber, for God's sakes. The reason we're here. Pofon said the dragon had strange eyes. I wonder what he meant. Why leave a plot important thing to an optional conversation? Good answer. Zentuo must have put UV lamps inside the dragon's eyes to deal with any renegade animatronics. He got them from Monstrous Fright and Magic, not Fazbear Entertainment. Why in hell would they be going renegade in the first place? Ah, oh, come on, Scoob. You've taken down dragons before. A Chinese dragon that was coming after you after stealing that sacred candy ring. And you also used a dragon-infused sword to cut the black samurai sword. Oh, wait a minute. 
Scooby-Doo and the Samurai Sword didn't happen yet. Never mind. It's Maggie Z. It was her disappearing act that gave her away. Quite a trick, until I realized she was conveniently near a sewer entrance. Using the dragon as a distraction, she could drop down into the sewer and be gone. So, what? She was just using the dragon to get around unseen? She stopped a parade and everyone's time and festivities for nothing, didn't she? You can't catch what you can't hold. You can't catch what you can't hold. Hydrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, helium, water, blood. You can hold all those in a container, in a canister. Fuck you. That sounded like a man's voice. No, that sounded like someone speaking through a voice changer or a synthesizer. You don't know if it was a man or a woman. Could be both, could be neither this place rock and roller coaster land it's a theme park started by one of my favorite musicians the guitar ghoul would you believe me if i told you this wouldn't be the last time they went to a theme park based on a rock star like that time they met kiss and stopped an evil witch from using a black space diamond to wake up a space world eater in a space volcano this is a ticket for the haunted house attraction the guitar ghoul may be hiding there Of course, you can't enter the haunted house attraction without a ticket. And by that they mean it literally will not move unless anyone going to it has a ticket. What the hell is this? We got ghost carts right out of Shocker on Shock Street. Not sure if this haunted house attraction is even worth it, even with the pretty spooky attire, when they don't even bother to take boxes or derailed cars off the track. What exactly was the point of that? To show the guitar ghoul's in here? We kind of assumed he'd be in here, knowing that someone is snooping around. Okay, the moving bookshelf with a hidden room behind it, that's... that's not a problem. Haunted houses can have that. But why is there a lantern? It's not like you would use it to light your way to do maintenance or something. Presumably you'd have, like, a normal-ass flashlight on you. Oh, so that's how this haunted house bombed. They built their roller coaster to drop into a bottomless chasm. It cannot be comfortable to ride a cart that defies gravity. You ever see that scene in Shark Boy and Lava Girl? You know, where they stop the roller coaster? Where do you think you're going? I just thought of something. How come the park staff, who I assume are given UV lamps to defend themselves against any renegade animatronics, use them? Like, surely it's not that hard to get a UV lamp and then go into the park, take care of the animatronics. <laughs> like, the guitar ghoul is, you know, doing his shtick, and then they pull a UV on him, and then, then, the, then the jig is up. <laughs> okay, chocolate bars, popcorn, chips, that all makes sense to be in an amusement park, or... A haunted house in an amusement park, but shrimp behind a hidden wall? Nah. -uh. Yes, thanks to Scooby. According to this surveillance tape, the park has been plagued by a number of disturbing events. Like, would you define disturbing, please? First, rides started going crazy. Then animatronics began chasing people around. You should know that. Monstrous Fright and Magic had the same problem. In fact, they told you the animatronics were on the fritz. It's like going to Fazbear Entertainment's Megaplex and being like, What? The animatronics are attacking people? No! It was as if they had a life of their own. This sounds like sabotage. Here's the strange thing. The signal controlling the robots seemed to be coming from Ghoul Mountain in the water park. Okay, I don't know the revenue of theme parks, but... This theme park has a haunted mansion, a water park, and a circus. How do they have enough money to put a giant mountain in the shape of the guitar ghoul's head in the water park? Coming soon. Rock and Roller Coaster Land Zoo. Question. Why does the Midway need burger-shaped trampolines? Like at all? Like, I mean, if it's like a kid's attraction somewhere in the Midway, then okay, but... These things aren't meant for kids. 
people in the roller coaster. I wonder if the culprit is on it. Or someone who went into the haunted house previously dropped their photo of them on the roller coaster. Again, not everything has to be tied to the mystery. Lobster. Okay, if Disneyland and Disney World are anything to go by, lobster in a theme park, eh, it's kind of acceptable. But... Why is whole lobster on roller coaster? It go up, it go down, it go zoom. Scooby snack. This annoying fairy Tinkerbell sound that these swings make. What's new, Scooby Doo? Oh, ha ha! Very funny. Insert laugh track here. <laughs> Why the hell is this bat costume red and pink? Ah, what the hell, Valentine's Day was just a day ago, so might as well say it now. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody! But this is such a downgrade from the Kung Fu costume. I mean, yeah, we can glide, but that's for, like, scripted segments. The other one basically gave us an entirely new moveset and a finishing move. Like, you couldn't, like, give us a death tornado spin in this one? That would have been probably a lot more useful. Apparently someone thought it was fucking hilarious to leave a piece of broccoli up here on the top of the Guitar Ghoul statue. Because it is fucking annoying to get with the bat suit. This guy rocks! Get it? He rocks! Help me, Scooby! Apparently as soon as you step into the water park, you're greeted with a water slide that you have to slide down without consent. Shaggy, instead of waiting for us at the bottom of the slide like a normal person, goes further into the water park without us. And this is Shaggy Rogers. He does not go into scary places alone. What a great idea to store toxic waste barrels next to a water slide. Gotta make sure all those kids are visible on the way down as they glow green from radiation. Not only did the theme park owner build a lagoon in the water park, but he also put sharks in it. This is just Jaws 3, but with Scooby-Doo. Great enemy to have in a water park. A symbolist strongman. Not, you know, the circus right next door. Trademark Legend of Zelda enemy design. Just take something that's been there before, make it a different color, make it harder and more of a pain in the ass to kill. You know, thinking about it, large, long, swaying, electrified cables in a place of iron and water can't be a good thing. Water, fire, air, and dirt. Fucking magnets. How do they work? And I don't want to talk to a scientist. Y'all motherfuckers lying and getting me pissed. This fish, which I presume is the shark's food that they have to feed them, is just here, floating in midair on top of a fan. Logic. What be that? There you are, Raggy. Hey, Scoob. Boy, am I glad to see you. And look what I found. A giant water slide. Which doesn't look to be supported in any architectural way, and it's just floating like it's magic. And there are gaps in it, so it's not a safe water slide. And also, Shaggy, why are you here, and how did you get up here? I had to get into a wingsuit and float up here, but... I guess you just Ultra Instinct your way up here. Apparently someone took a bag of Jet Puff Marshmallows onto this water slide. It got stuck and somehow remained pristine and unopened. Correct me if I'm wrong, but lightning that strikes water electrifies it. Therefore, your ass should be toast. Oh, looks like Simon Belmont went down this water slide. You can tell because there's a free-floating ham. This water park sucks. There are three water slides, all of which are dangerous, and two of which are incredibly short. A lagoon full of sharks, not a wave pool, hot tub, or any other kind of pool. And to top it all off, the last water slide, the longest, ends in you having to jump off and landing on rough carpet. That's painful to ride down on your bum. That's what you get for going head-to-head -head against the guitar ghoul. Well, random lady who looks like she walked out of a Devil May Cry bootleg, we didn't go head-to-head -head with him. 
We ran from him. Also, who are you? Possibly be behind this, even though the clues say otherwise. Help! That sounds like Daphne. Daphne? It sounds like she's in the circus area. Ugh, danger prone Daphne did it again. And seriously, Fred, how did you lose track of her? She's not that difficult to miss in her bright purple dress. This is a tour album for a band called Deaf Potatoes. Hey, doesn't the lead guitarist look like Alvin Weiner? Well, I guess I know who the bad guy is, considering he's also not in the hub world right now. Be part of some food stand decoration. Maybe it's a clue to the Guitar Ghoul's hideout. Okay, what the fuck? Okay, I counted at least six tigers in cages. What the hell does a circus need with any more than maybe two? I guess Mark Hamill is just watching his favorite soaps in the background of this circus tent. Who else could be laughing? <laughs> oh, wow, a quartet of enemies who I've easily trumped several times over since getting to this amusement park. Oh, whatever shall I do? Got him. Ah, yes, one of the rare staples of a circus. Not the no-arm, no-leg man, not the dwarf, or the hairy man, or the snake woman. No, it's the electrified pool that they have. Because every circus has an electrified something. What the shit? How'd that balloon hurt me? Or wait, is this like a Sly 2 scenario where it's only things that Scooby's afraid of hurts him? Which, by that logic, would mean Scooby would be invincible if he was not afraid. And another piece of food that is suspended off the ground because fucking magic. At least the apple has a little more reason to be in the circus. You know, the old shoot the apple off the person's head trick. That usually doesn't end well. Oh, forgot about the mubber machines. Uh, just add like six here. That'll cover it. Not this shit again. Bitch, I am coming! Shut your trap and just sit there! I am on my way, I've been on my way for the past 20 minutes, now just shut up and let me get to you. The word of the day is inertia, which shall be demonstrated to you right now. for an old guitar ghoul hit. Funny. It's attributed to N.S. I guess we know who the real guitar ghoul is now. Thanks, game, for spoiling it. A tennis ball. Maybe this comes from a midway attraction. Maybe it's a clue to the guitar ghoul's hideout. Or one of the jugglers in the circus was using it to practice. Again, not everything has to do with the guitar ghoul. This is the hammer for the strongman's bell. Perhaps the guitar ghoul hid something important in there. Which would be the golden bat coin to get the bat suit upgrade, which this time around took two clues to unlock. This is a brochure for a circus sideshow. Perhaps we'll find clues to the guitar ghoul's identity there. Or some ordinary person or circus performer picked it up Read it, was like, ooh, I want to go there at some point. Stuffed it in their back pocket and it fell out. Why does everything have to attribute to the mystery? I wonder how the guitar ghoul managed to sabotage all rides without anyone noticing. Interesting. The videotapes show an intricate network of tunnels connecting all rides. The guitar ghoul must have used them to move around unnoticed. I could have told you that. The entire haunted mansion has a cave system underneath it. Because someone thought it was smart to build the roller coaster to sink down into a giant chasm. And no, I will not let that go. It's poor design. Ever play Roller Coaster Tycoon? That shit doesn't fly. There's something strange about that, Alvin Wiener. Scooby, you won't believe this. Alvin Wiener was lead guitarist of Deaf Potatoes. A one-hit wonder band who once opened for the Guitar Ghoul. I mean, wasn't it you who said the lead guitarist looked like Alvin Wiener? I mean, really. 
It's not that hard to put two and two together. Again, like Kung Fu Master into Ninja, you don't get an upgrade for collecting the extra coin. It's just cosmetic. I mean, yeah, he looks like Sly Cooper's ultimate costume from Sly 4, but that don't mean dick. I mean, you could have given us like a Death Tornado spin, at the least, for finding the upgrade, which took two clues to find. Alvin Wiener? Wow! You mean one of the only people who was involved in this mystery? You're kidding! It's like, it's, it's like with the Scooby movies. There's so few people that you're bound to figure out who it is before the halfway point of the film. Though in some cases it's a given, like Mr. Stupid Bill who programmed a baseball virus. Check out that video in the card up top. You can't prove anything. Besides, I'm the victim here. What do you mean? Daphne, what we have before us is a story of jealousy. Mr. Wiener's band, Deaf Potato, was never a real success. Deaf Potato Guitar Ghoul. The lead guitarist of Deaf Leopard didn't have any problems with Gene Simmons, did he? Huh. No sin here. But why the secret identity? Have you seen MTV? Any of those celebrity uh, reality shows? If not for security, they would get mugged and mobbed by fans. Heck, YouTubers can't even leave conventions without nearly getting trampled. Heck, I'm shocked more YouTubers don't have a secret identity. I wanted to share my music, not my life. So I created the Guitar Ghoul disguise. Good on you, Nikki. That's the smart thing to do. Jeepers! They sure are doing a lot of renovations here. I know this can be said about most locations you guys come to, but you're trespassing. Good evening. I'm Fred Jones from Mystery Inc. I'm Professor Stoker. Mr. Oh, Frank Welker's talking to himself again. He's done it so many times in the 80s, it's basically routine at this point. And what are you looking at? Um, you? My nigga, you just got roasted! <laughs> Hello, sir. I'm Daphne Blake from Mystery Inc. We're here to help you with your monster troubles. Oh, sorry. I'm Joe Grimm, Chief of Security. She seems awfully professional. Did, did like, the President give the Mystery Incorporated gang, like, the fifth freedom? That they can basically trespass and break whatever law they want just so long as they get to solve a mystery? Oh, no. This is like the worst mystery ever. <laughs> Worse than vampire furries trying to give you the bad suck? Worse than nearly getting trapped in cyberspace because some guy was mad that his project wasn't picked, so he programmed a murderous virus? Or the time Tim Curry nearly murdered all of you? It's hardly the worst, and the worst is certainly yet to come. Apparently someone in this age of 2005 and 6 still uses a Polaroid camera. Look, I know game logic, but this is the terrible dinosaur exhibit. You gotta parkour around just to see the exhibits. And, considering the size of these levels, I'm putting this museum size somewhere in the ballpark of... Ooh, I don't know... Nine football stadiums? You know, for a museum that has a problem with rogue animatronics, they seem to be fine with predatory plants just sitting out, biting everyone who walks by. I was gonna say, how are these animatronics flying, but then I noticed they have a gas trail behind them, so... I guess they're air-propelled or something? Or maybe it's the same tech that's in the extreme gear from Sonic Freeriders? Hey, Scoob! Like, what about all these fake volcanoes, huh? These would make some awesome barbecues! Well, I guess now volcano barbecue is a thing, thanks to One Piece and uh, Film Z. Uh, those volcanoes, they're literally there spewing, you know... Fake fog, gas, whatever. They aren't actually producing heat. Now, wait a minute. I was saving this for a special occasion. <laughs> Shaggy, your drumstick! Unless I miss something where these pterodactyl ghosts, because that's what they are, they're based on the pterodactyl ghosts from the Scooby Doo show. Unless I miss the fact that they're secretly programmed to think they're actually pterodactyls, why would it grab for the meat and therefore Shaggy's hand? 
Professor Stoker was right. This place is a circus. It requires you to don a wingsuit just to get through one exhibit. What museum does that? What if you're unfit to be in a wingsuit? Just nope. Turn around. Leave. <laughs> the whole damn planet, huh? And yes, I know it goes on the mobile at the top of this map, but... I mean, come on. Why is it here? Who took it down just to sit in the random dinosaur exhibit? Marshmallow. Ah yes, one of the many must-haves a museum must own. Fire-breathing animatronics, or fire-breathing anything for that matter. Gotta make sure those kids are nice and toasty on a cold winter's day. Maybe you guys can check out the medieval room while I investigate the undersea exhibit with Daphne. A museum of this size cannot survive on four exhibits alone. A dinosaur exhibit, a medieval exhibit, an undersea exhibit, and a planetarium exhibit. You can't survive with four exhibits in a museum this size. Hey Scoob, I'll bet you they have some kind of barbecue in there. It's at least 90% more likely. Well, not barbecue, like smoke it and then cook it, but at least they rub it down and then cook it. This is a replica of the planet Saturn, named after the Roman god of time. Perhaps this has a hidden symbolic meaning. Repeat! I feel like I'm repeating myself over and over again. Because this could be nothing. You have no proof. It's connected to the caveman. This metal chain may have been used by the caveman to scare away workers. I'm just gonna ding the counter up to 200 because this is getting annoying. Just putting myself on repeat. And that's no fun for anyone. Also, it takes two clues this time just to get the first costume. You know what that Vivante woman wanted to call this venerable institution? And a museum. A muse and museum. A museum. Can you imagine? That's, uh, catchy. It's idiotic. Oh my god, that's not even funny. That's not even a play on words. That's literally just taking the space out of a museum. A museum. A museum. Holy shit, this pisses me off a lot. 25, please. Some cheese, please. Oh, shit. That caveman used the flu network and apparated away to the Wizard of Oz through the Carnicles and Narnia wardrobe. Oh! Dooby dooby doo. Alright, at least he gave us a long range attack, but considering how situational these costumes are, I'm surprised he didn't give us like a climbing section with like suction cup plungering up like we're climbing a rock wall or something. Okay, I think most of you can understand the concept of enemies with annoying shields. Kingdom Hearts players especially with the dog shield Heartless and those big guys in Hollow Bastion, but what the fuck is this? I hit him from behind, where he doesn't have a shield, and he still repels me. What hot shit is that? Wow, homing plunger arrows. What is this, Luigi's Mansion 3? Oh boy, the animatronic is one glitch away from glitching into the back rooms. Say hi to Smiler and the party goer for me, will ya? As I mentioned previously, I hold my tongue whenever the ingredient makes sense to the world. Like, you would find chips in an amusement park. You would find, like, fruit or apples in a museum that had a cafeteria, but a fish in the medieval section in a dusty back room? Nah. -uh. And on that cheese that was in the, uh, closet? Eh, that, that might be a storage area. So, for the fish, just one. Shaggy, yet again, after being separated from us, just goes on ahead without us. Despite it being spooky, spoopy. And that is obviously something Shaggy would not do. At least, not unless he was hypnotized to think he was in Ultra Instinct. Well, Scooby found this. It seems to be some sort of contract. 
This is clearly something you would just leave lying around. It took three clues. Three. A sword, a breastplate, and a shield, which looks way too big for anyone to use, to get to the golden coin to unlock what is essentially a triple shot for the archer costume. It's not that much better. What? You're expecting me to send this? That there was a ham inside a vending machine? I've seen weird vending machines, trust me. McDonald's has their own brand vending machine where you can basically order anything off their basic menu. There are several pizza vending machines that dispense pizza. Don't even get me started on all the crazy vending machines with panties and lewd magazines in Japan. There's Pringle vending machines that, you know, have AMVs going on in the background on the, on the screen while you're choosing your chips. There is a vending machine that is essentially a mini-mart that's automated. Just press the buttons into the commands. Once you have all what you need, you put your money in, press start, and off it goes. Vending machines have come a long way, and they're just getting crazier and crazier. The requisition of a hammerhead shark prop being used as a battering ram. Well, looks like someone took the undersea part a little too literally. You didn't need to make a small C for the undersea exhibit. And what the hell are those flying fish? And of course, the water's electrified. Because that dumbass Jerry just had to take his union break now, and those electric wires are charging the water. How many things in this museum can't you do unless you have a certain skill set or object? Like, you couldn't get through here unless you had a ranged attack of some sort. And <laughs> this museum would not last more than maybe a week because this amusium is way too damn complicated just to traverse. Really? All the clues are in the first area? I mean, you're not even trying. Like, I get it, it's a kid's game, but you should teach them to go out and search things on their own path, not just gift wrap them all in the same area. These things glow, it's not like they're hard to miss. And apparently here's just the 10,000 volt ghost in the underwater area for some reason. And he's the only enemy that can be hurt by the costume specifically. But here's my question. How is he in an animatronic? You can see him form out of the ether lightning and it's just like, how is he a robot? How is the robot not fried from all that electricity surging around it? Cotton candy! Cold point, Scooby Snacks! So after dropping 70 feet and surviving, apparently we just end up in this aerospace section of the museum that apparently exists underneath the undersea exhibit. And there's, there, there's just a biplane here ready to go full of gas, and it's big enough that we can fly through this exhibit. I give up. Instead of being full of poopy water from the sewers in Chinatown, it's just free-floating here in the middle of the air because apparently someone just likes tying vegetables to strings and leaving them in the aerospace exhibit. Somehow we're back in the undersea exhibit? And Scooby-Doo, channeling his inner Miles Tells Prowler, just lets the biplane go off on its own and then crash, probably killing someone or severely damaging the environment. Okay, how the hell did you drop this? A VHS tape. And isn't this still playing on loop as I'm going through this on the security camera TVs? <laughs> oh my god, three worlds in a row! God damn, shut up or I'm just gonna start plunging your holes! Wait, no, stop! A hidden room made by a cult that follows the creed of Shrek is love, Shrek is life. Ogres are like onions. No! Layers! Ogres have layers. Onions have layers? You get it. We both have layers. For some reason, the 10,000 volt ghost, after getting his trap piece, is the only one to be represented by his actual in-game model and not, like, drawn on like all the other ones are. After all we've been through in this level, I shouldn't be surprised, but... 
having to parkour off of floating planets, which I assume are slippery because they're mubber, just to get to the damn planetarium. It's a UF. Uh -oh. Apparently, this museum has functioning UFOs, and UFOs, for some reason, are in a museum, which is about science and facts. Unless it's like a demo, and this is just going to lead into the Jetsons timeline. Fried and magic. Two for two, Fred. Scooby found a contract that points right back to Stanton. And if I'm correct, the answer to Jed's disappearance. Stanton sent us on a wild goose chase. Wow, you threw your business partner who was giving you basically secondary revenues and a fortune of petroleum under the bus just to throw off some kids. Not sure if this is worth it. Oh, come on, Batman. Do you think electrified water is going to stop us now? We've been jumping over that shit the whole damn game. Someone apparently actually closes this singular door that is activated by this singular button that requires a singular key card to be punched in. Zoinks. There's so many of them. Two beefed up Chinese zombies and two beefed up pterodactyl ghosts. The yeah, other's stronger, but there's not more of them. If there were like, I don't know, 15 in this room, which I'm doubtful this game could even run, then maybe. What the hell? You had a UV light this whole time? This is almost as bad as Shaggy having that super magnet in the cyber chase. These mysteries wouldn't even be mysteries if you just turned the thing on when the villain showed up. Zen Chuo would reveal himself, and then Maggie Z would presumably dissolve. The, uh, uh, what was his name? The Guitar Ghoul. He wouldn't be a problem. None of these villains would have been a problem if you just turned on the fucking light. Jed! Hey, cousin. Uh, do you mind blasting the rest of this, too? I mean, of course I knew it was Jed, but... Who moved him, and why'd they move him? If they're trying to maintain the charade that he's, like, a wax animatronic dummy or whatever, why move him and give it away? Just as I suspected, Jed was trapped in that costume. You said, and I quote, it's just a costume when we first came here. I stand by it. If you had just let Scooby investigate that thing, this whole game would have never happened. It took till they stood next to each other, but I just realized Jed is just Fred's character model, just slightly altered and changed colors here and there. Well, well, well. Did you really think you'd get away with this? Wait, I thought this was a miniature set, you know, like in those old Kaiju and Power Rangers movies. Isn't the thing supposed to be, you know... Smaller than the average person? Why is the city gigantic? Why is the animatronic gigantic? And are we seriously doing a repeat of an enemy we've only seen, like, maybe an hour earlier? Why is it the pterodactyl ghosts have an explanation for how they fly, but Scooby doesn't? He's flying with no propulsion. He's basically in a wingsuit. And he's continuing to fly forward without thrust. Going somewhere... The jig is up, Mr. Stanton. Is it? Like, there are two of you! Hmm. Scooby? Hmm. Hmm. Hmm? Mama! It's Marcy! So for Jed, who found out your secret, you put him in a mubber costume that he was locked inside. But when you impersonate someone else who you're also trying to frame, you just let them wander around freely? We're back to the doppelganger conspiracy. Why would you let them out if you're impersonating them and trying to frame them? Indeed, Fred. It seems Marcy was trying to frame Stanton, not Jed. Marcy. 
But why? Because I helped create Mubber, but you took all the credit for it. I thought that if I gave you a bad name, I could start up my own business. Mr. Stanton, is this true? What the hell? What does it matter if it's true? She not only put people's lives in danger here at Monsters Fright and Magic, but in Chinatown, at Rock and Roller Coaster Land, and the museum. Heck, at the museum, she's doing an illegal pumping for petroleum. She's not a good person, no matter what you try and force upon me. Marcy, I didn't know you felt this way. You should have talked to me about it. Destroying the reputation of monstrous fright and magic would destroy Mubber. I'm sorry if I hurt you, Marcy. I'd like you to become a partner in the company. If you can forgive me, that is. Aw, that's so sweet. Almost makes me forget about all those people who got maimed, attacked, and otherwise probably psychologically traumatized because of the animatronics she reprogrammed in Chinatown, Rock and Roll, Coaster Land, and the fucking museum. Not to mention that deal she had with that guy was so not worth it. He got thrown under the bus for something that could have easily been talked out like it was some marriage uh, counseling. I'm so hungry, I could eat an Octorok!